keep the country safe. And it's time now for our Sunday group. Michael Needham, head of the conservative think tank Heritage Action for America. Fox News political analyst and columnist for The Hill, Juan Williams. Julie Pace, who covers the White House for the Associated Press, and Laura Ingram, editor of LifeSet and a Fox News political analyst. Laura, what do you expect from the president this week? Do you think that, because Stephen Miller didn't tell us, that he will issue a new executive order addressing some of the legal concerns raised by the courts? Uh, the Ninth Circuit made a complete legal mishmash of the doctrine of standing, uh, of hinting that there's a due process right, of individuals outside the country who are not American citizens to enter the country. That having been said, the rollout of this executive order was not the finest hour for the administration. I believe they're going to withdraw the order. They will write a more narrowly tailored order that will probably allay the concerns of most, although in some of the language of the Ninth Circuit opinion, it might not even be enough for them, but they'll lose standing to continue the case. That case will probably go moot. I would be very surprised if they wanted to take a gamble, going back to the district court, then going again to the Ninth Circuit, then going again to the uh, Supreme Court. This has been a major distraction for the administration. If I were uh, if I were operating comms over there, I'd have a bit of a different approach. You got to repeal and replace Obamacare. You got to do tax reform. You got to do the things that you talked about. There's some wisdom in what they're saying here, but the way this was rolled out, I know everybody's going to say we've edited it all the right way. When John Kelly at Homeland Security says he wishes that you know we had done it a little differently, in my view, that's a tell. It's okay, they can redo this, but they have to learn that it's, you know, you're running full bore into a, into a buzzsaw of the Democrat resistance in the Ninth Circuit is probably going to distract you for a while. Julie, President Trump, I think it's fair to say, doesn't like to lose. He suffered a major setback with the ruling by the Ninth Circuit Court. Uh, this controversy over the travel ban has obviously eaten up, you can just see from this show and uh, all the coverage this week, an enormous amount of time and energy when, as Laura points out, there's a big agenda out there. Do you get any sense of how unhappy the president is with this development? He's told people privately that he does not think that the rollout went well, despite what he said publicly about the strength of the order and what he said about what he feels is the national security interest of the, of the country. If you talk to Trump supporters, people who voted for him, Yes, they believe that this is part of what he promised he would do, but they are more focused on Obamacare. They are more focused on jobs in the economy, and Trump knows that. And I think he is going to want to shift his administration's focus to those issues, which, frankly, are going to be even more difficult to implement than some of what we've seen on this executive order. Michael, Donald Trump came in as a disruptor. It can't be good when in his first major initiative, and this is, I mean, he's had some orders or speeches, but this was the first major policy initiative, the disruptor gets stopped in his tracks by the federal court. Whether it rightly or wrongly, it doesn't add to the momentum of I'm going to shake up the system. Well, that may be true, but the courts are wrong in this system, and that in this instance, that's important. This is an instance of the president at the apex of his political power. He has statutory uh, power given to him by Congress. He has constitutional power, uh, and we want the presidency running the national security. What what do these judges in San Francisco? Uh, what information do they have from classified? Uh, briefings that they've gotten about the national security threats that are that our nation. But faces. judges what have done this before. The, the Supreme Court, again, not saying it's right or wrong. In the Boumediene case, they slapped down President Bush's ability to handle uh, detainees at Guantanamo. Sure, courts have a right. But when when we come to immigration policy, it is very clear, as Stephen Miller said, that statutorily the president of the United States has the ability, whenever he wants, to restrict the, the people coming into this country. Uh, as he sees necessary. On top of that, he has through the Constitution. So do you think he should double down on this, or do you think he should I do I think that what? it is urgent for the national security of the United States. That it, I, I, I think he's probably this week going to do something to make sure that there's security measures put into place. It is urgent for the national security of the United States, however, that the principle is reaffirmed that it is the executive branch which has the information. It is the executive branch that holds the meetings to think about uh, trade-offs. And it's the executive branch, by the way, that is held accountable at the polls, not the judiciary. And it is urgent for the national security of the United States that we reaffirm that the executive is at the apex of its uh, uh, legislative at its power what if it goes uh, when the it comes other way what if the court actually circumscribes executive yes, this power is, this is why the and we people. have precedent on the books that is right. deleterious to the separation of powers because maybe we rushed in before we had an attorney general and a solicitor general then you're going to have precedent on the books that's going to be a big albatross the around the executive that the american people are losing confidence in our nation's institutions is that we have courts that have question. now decided they that they want the court? to it is urgent for our national okay, security so you're not that it be the reaffirmed question. that the executive it'll be a disastrous precedent i clerked happens. on the second circuit the second circuit probably wouldn't have done this the supreme court tried to predict what 
Anthony Kennedy is going to do on executive power. Good luck. Juan? I don't think there's. Uh, I don't think this, uh, the Ninth Circuit is to be demeaned here. I just. I think that they made an argument, and specifically an argument that touches on the rollout. Things like green cards. It wasn't clear to the officials at the time that people with green cards would be allowed back in the country. Secondly, the suggestion that they don't have a right to intervene. Not only do we have the case involving President Bush, we have a case involving President Obama, where the courts in Texas said that with regard to immigration, the courts do have. Some right to look at potential damage to state interest or private interest I didn't say in the they country. They don't have the right to intervene. I said that they got this case exactly wrong, and in their decision, they didn't even cite the statute uh, that Stephen Miller was talking about earlier. That is very clear that the Congress has legislatively granted the President of the United States the ability to restrict. But the courts have a right to review, Michael, and that's they what they were asserting. The I don't think they got it wrong. Record of but they, wrong, they have a right the to intervene in the, on this country. subject. It's not the case. Yes, the President has the prerogative with regard to immigration. But it's not beyond judicial review. Okay, we have, we have one more minute here, and I want to get into another subject I wanted to talk about, which is the case of the National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. He denied the Sean Spicer, based on his assurances, denied. Vice President Pence, sitting at this table, denied that he had talked to the Russian ambassador about sanctions. It now turns out, apparently, from Signal Intelligence, that he did talk about it. Is he in trouble? I think that uh, this week will be clarifying on whether he's in trouble. You have to understand how many times this story has changed. First, it was the dates of the calls that changed. Second, it was the number of times that he spoke to the Russian ambassador that changed. Now we're told that the content of the calls has changed. And the fact that the vice president went to Flynn, and this has been backed up by the vice president's aides this week, went to Flynn and asked what happened in those calls and was told a story that may not be true, it's hard to see how a national security advisor can continue on in that role if they're giving incorrect information to the vice president of the United States. It, interestingly enough, apparently Flynn and the vice president on Friday met twice. Uh, so Flynn knows he's in trouble with the vice president. And, and Flynn, presumably given his history at, at the Pentagon where he was running intelligence, knows that there are plenty of systems in place in the U.S. intelligence agencies to actually capture content of these types of calls. Oh, there's no so question. That's somewhere trans these that calls exist. That transcript exists somewhere. Exactly. Anyway. I mean, either he lied to them or they're lying for him, but in either case, somebody's covering up something. Leaks. There are a lot of leaks <laughs> Well, no, the White Washington House. Post said they All right, guys, nine you're sources You're taking time from your next segment. We have to take a break here.